the docking was telecast live in color from the CSM. After docking and once Cernan and Stafford had re-entered Charlie Brown, Snoopy was sealed off and separated from Charlie Brown and Snoopy's ascent stage engine was fired to fuel depletion to send the ascent stage on a trajectory past the moon and into a heliocentric orbit. This maneuver was unlike the fate of the subsequent Apollo 11 ascent stage, which was left in lunar orbit to eventually crash. Following ejection of the LM ascent stage, the crew slept and performed additional photography and observation of the lunar surface from orbit. Though the crew was able to locate 18 landmarks on the surface and take a number of additional photographs of various surface features, crew fatigue necessitated the cancellation of two scheduled television broadcasts. Thereafter, the main service propulsion system engine of the CSM reignited for about 2.5 minutes to set Apollo 10 on a trajectory towards Earth, achieving such a trajectory at 137, 39 to 13. At the time of its departure from lunar orbit, Apollo 10 had orbited the Moon 31 times over the span of about 61 hours and 37 minutes. During the travel phase back to Earth, the crew performed some observational activities which included star Earth horizon sightings for navigation. The crew also performed a scheduled test to gauge the reflectivity of the CSM's high-gain antenna and broadcast six television transmissions of varying durations to show views inside the spacecraft and of the Earth and Moon from the crew's vantage point. Cernan reported later that he and his crewmates became the first to successfully shave in space during the return trip, using a safety razor and thick shaving gel, as such items had been deemed a safety hazard and prohibited on earlier flights. The crew fired the engine of the CSM for the only mid-course correction burn required during the return trip at 188, 49-58, a few hours before separation of the CM from the SM. The burn lasted about 6.7 seconds. As the spacecraft rapidly approached Earth on the final day of the mission, Apollo 10 set the record for the fastest human spaceflight, traveling 39,897 kilometers per hour relative to Earth, which is the fastest speed at which any humans have ever traveled. This is because the return trajectory was designed to take only 42 hours rather than the normal 56. In addition to that record, the Apollo 10 crew are the humans who have traveled the farthest away from their homes, at a distance of 408,950 kilometers. While most Apollo missions orbited the Moon at the same 111 kilometers from the lunar surface, the distance between the Earth and Moon varies by about 43,000 kilometers, between perigee and apogee, throughout each lunar month, and the Earth's rotation makes the distance to Houston vary by at most another 11,000 kilometers each day. The Apollo 10 crew reached the farthest point in their orbit around the far side of the Moon at about the same time Earth's rotation put Houston nearly a full Earth diameter farther away. At 191, 33 to 26, the CM separated from the SM in preparation for re-entry, which occurred about 15 minutes later at 191, 48 to 54. Splashdown of the CM occurred, approximately 15 minutes after re-entry, in the Pacific Ocean about 740 kilometers east of American Samoa on May 26, 1969, at 16 hours 52 minutes and 23 seconds coordinated universal time and mission elapsed time 192, 323. The astronauts were recovered by USS Princeton, on board which they spent about four hours and took a congratulatory phone call from President Richard Nixon. As they had not made contact with the lunar surface, Apollo 10's crew were not required to quarantine like the first landing crews would be. Orbital operations and the solo maneuvering of the LM in partial descent to the lunar surface paved the way for the successful Apollo 11 lunar landing by demonstrating the capabilities of the requisite mission hardware and systems. Among other items, the crew demonstrated that the tasks required to execute the checkout procedures of the LM in initial descent and rendezvous were feasible to accomplish within the allotted time, that the communication systems of the LM were sufficient, that the rendezvous and landing radars of the LM were operational in lunar orbit, and that the two spacecraft could be adequately monitored by personnel on Earth. The precision of lunar orbital navigation improved with Apollo 10 and, combined with data from Apollo 8, NASA expected that it had achieved a level of precision sufficient to execute the first crewed lunar landing. After about two weeks of Apollo 10 data analysis, a NASA flight readiness team cleared Apollo 11 to proceed with its scheduled July 1969 flight. On July 20, Armstrong and Aldrin landed on the moon, and four days later the three astronauts returned to Earth, fulfilling John F. Kennedy's challenge to Americans to land astronauts on the moon and return them safely to Earth by the end of the 1960s. In July 1969, Stafford replaced Alan Shepard's flight test center at Edwards Air Force Base in California, retiring in November 1979 as a lieutenant general. 
Young commanded the Apollo 16 lunar landing mission flown in April 1972. From 1974 to 1987, Young served as chief astronaut, commanding the STS-1 and STS-9 space shuttle missions in April 1981 and November 1983, respectively, and retired from NASA's astronaut corps in 2004. Gene Cernan commanded the final Apollo lunar mission, Apollo 17, flown in December 1972. Cernan retired from NASA and the Navy as a captain in 1976. The Smithsonian has been accountable for the command module Charlie Brown since 1970. The spacecraft was on display in several countries until it was placed on loan to the London Science Museum in 1978. Charlie Brown's SM was jettisoned just before re-entry and burned up in the Earth's atmosphere, its remnants scattering in the Pacific Ocean. The Saturn V's SIVB third stage was accelerated past Earth escape velocity to become space debris, as of 2020, it remains in a heliocentric orbit. The ascent stage of the lunar module Snoopy was jettisoned into a heliocentric orbit. Snoopy's ascent stage orbit was not tracked after 1969, and its whereabouts were unknown. In 2011, a group of a lunar orbit, its current location is unknown, though it may have eventually crashed into the moon as a result of orbital decay. Phil Stook, a planetary scientist who studied the lunar crash sites of the LM's ascent stages, wrote that the descent stage crashed at an unknown location, and another source stated that the descent stage eventually impact ed within a few degrees of the equator on the near side. Richard Orloff and David M. Harland, in their sourcebook on Apollo, stated that the descent stage was left in the low orbit, but perturbations by mascons would have caused this to decay, sending the stage to crash onto the lunar surface.